Okay. So, this is now my fourth time doing this video um, because there's been technical difficulties. So, let's try to start from the beginning and hopefully I don't repeat myself because I've said this now four times. So, bear with me. Okay. So, I'm going to describe a family um, that I viewed um, in a therapy session um, via a video that did therapy through Bowen, Bowen's theory and um, used the therapeutic tactics um, that that theory delineates and the concepts um, and revolving around differentiation, multi-generational processes, sibling position, emotional cutoff, triangles, things um, within that theory. Um, the family that was discussed, we will call them the uh, B family. And they consist of Adrian, Judy, Adrian, who's the father, he's in his 60s, he does work. Um, Judy, who is also in her 60s, she does work as well, full time. Um, Pam, who is their 32-year-old child, who also does work. However, she does live in the house. She does not live in, um, have a child, uh, have a family of her own, and she is still under the roof of her family. Um, for the most part, still living as a child, uh, an adult child in their house. Um, there, are, uh, um, there also is a brother or there was a brother who was a part of the family however he committed suicide um they do not describe in the video when how or or um where he did this um how long ago or even any effects of um you know what has happened since his suicide or prior to his suicide they didn't really discuss it at all um what life was like prior to or after his suicide. Um, this was obviously a very touchy topic for the family, more specifically Adrian, but we'll get into that in a moment. Um, let's first talk about the presenting problem. Um, the family was um, decided to come to session because Pam, um, the 32-year-old um, child that lives in the home, she is currently, um, I guess, according to the family, becoming somewhat detached, emotionally, um, emotionally cut off from the family in that she shuts down a lot about her feelings and she just won't answer them. According to Adrian, you know, for the most part, she's becoming, I guess, more defiant um, and they're having an issue with her just not answering them when she calls them. She wants them uh, um, when when the parents, when her parents call her or anything to do a chore, to do a task, just to come into the room, she'll just ignore them. According to Pam, she doesn't quite know why. She doesn't have a reason or, or rhyme or reason as to why she does these things. She says she just, she just doesn't. She, um, the therapist kind of probed to see if there was some underlying things that she was trying to maybe be passive aggressive which um, I actually think that is one of my hypotheses as to why she is probably um, exhibiting these behaviors, but um, we'll get into that in a moment as well. For the most part, Pam um, is a very uh, self-functioning. She, she does a lot on her own. Unfortunately, um, she is mentally disabled. They don't disclose exactly what her issue, um, what her diagnosis is or what is going on with her. They just kind of speak about um, after the after the video that she is, she has some type of mental illness. I don't know if it's cerebral palsy or I'm not sure, um, but they do disclose that she does have a mental illness. Um, so we can, um, that, that is the presenting problem at this point. Um, that Pam is um, pretty much becoming just uh, cut off um, from her family. Um, she doesn't just she doesn't talk to them. She doesn't. Uh, she, she, they they have bad communication issues. Um, in a nutshell, 
Pam is adopted um, into the family. They do not disclose whether the son was adopted or not, um, but she was adopted into the family, and they do not talk about her her biological family at all. We don't know anything about her biological family or her history of her biological family, or even when she was adopted. Apparently, she was adopted very young um, while she was still a baby. Um, so they do speak about that briefly, but they don't disclose the her family, her biological family's history. Um, there seems to be a lot of chronic anxiety between the family, um, which leads into the triangle. Um, of the family. There's a projection process in relation to Judy and Pam where um, Judy has this idea of where she would like to see, uh, the, well, I should say where she would like to see, but the type of relationship she would like to have between her and Pam. She does not feel that the, the type of relationship that she has between her daughter and herself is an ideal relationship. She feels like her daughter does, in a sense, doesn't like her. She doesn't hang out with her. She asked, uh, Pam, Judy um, has asked her to do things um, with Pam, go to movies, go out to dinner, things like that, go to the mall, go shopping, and Pam will turn her down or will ask other people to go instead or um, or to come along with them instead of just spending, you know, intimate, um, close time with her mother. So Judy does um, disclose that there is a bit of high anxiety in relation to um, the relationship between her and Pam, her and her daughter, um, which ultimately builds a triangle with Adrian. Um, Adrian was the father. He will kind of try, it seems that he will try to um, navigate and help, help regulate the conversation between Judy and Pam. He'll, he'll tell Judy to, um, not, uh, to, to mind her tone, basically, when he's speaking to, when she's speaking to her daughter, um, which doesn't really seem to help, according to Judy, because she'll, you know, kind of shut down at that point and say, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Especially, I guess, if there's a high anxiety or tension between her and Pam, um, which Adrian will try to step in, but it doesn't seem to work that well. There is an alliance that seems a very close relationship between Pam and Adrian. They even during the session they share laughter, they share jokes, they were um, you know talking to each other. Whereas Pam, even throughout the whole session, never really spoke to Judy or in direction to Judy or anything. She she constantly only spoke to the therapist or she spoke. Um, commenting on something her father said or talking to her father. She never really spoke to her mom. There is definitely a fusion between mom, I mean, between Pam and Adrian, um, where Judy has explained that she does feel like she's the outcast in the family and that um, they do gang up on her at certain aspects that, you know, creates a lot of tension between not only Judy and Pam, but between Judy and Adrian. Um, this triangle is definitely um, full of anxiety and tension within the nuclear um, family of origin. And um, it shows um, through different behaviors that um, everyone exhibited, exhibits in the family. Uh, Judy also kind of um, triangulates her job I'm not sure if there's a specific person at her job that she is very close with, but she does describe that she doesn't quite like her job. However, she also admits that she would not quit her job, even if the family did not need um, the income, because I believe that that is her outlet. Um, that's something that she uses to release and to escape from the anxiety-filled house that she lives in um, and the tension that is built between her daughter and her family her husband. So she does like to, to, although she says she doesn't like to work, she doesn't like her job, I, I should say. She says she will, she would continue to work, even though her husband wants her to stay home. Even though she doesn't like her job, she would still continue to work because that is a source of release for her. Um, she doesn't say that's a source of relief, but um, that is where she does go to 
police are attention, it seems like. Adrian um, does admit that he's a former alcoholic. He does talk about his high anger um, and outbursts that he has towards the family and his yelling and screaming and cursing um, in the family. And he does express that he doesn't mind receiving that information uh, if, if the family were to tell him, like, you know, he, he does feel like he's a, re a very receptive person, that he will um, be able to receive any type of constructive criticism in relation to his anger and things like that. Um, but it seemed as though the family would have big to differ, um, given their facial expressions and how they um, reacted to him stating that. Um, he does feel like he's come a long way um, since his since he was an alcoholic and he does admit he's a proclaimed angry drunk or he used to be, but he does feel like now that he is older and more mature that he has calmed himself down a lot, although he does feel like there's still a problem. It also seems that, again, we're not sure when, how, or at the time frame of when um, their, um, Adrian and Judy's son had committed suicide. However, it is, um, it would be great to know what um, role did, um, did he play within the family in relation to um, what was he to Judy? What was his family role um, within, within this dynamic? Was he the martyr or was he the hero? Was he the one who calmed dad down? Was he the one who comforted mom? Um, when Judy and, I mean, when Adrian and Pam would gang up on Judy, who was he to the family? And it definitely would have been great to, um, explore, um, what role he did play in the family. Um, but it does cause for high anxiety with Adrian, especially Adrian, because it's mentioned in the beginning of the, of the video that he did not want to talk about his son's death and he continued to kind of like mention that throughout the video that that was a topic that he would not absolutely not discuss and he stuck to that and he stuck to that and he did not um discuss those issues at all um it seemed to be very high filled with high anxiety and high tension although judy and pam well more so judy had expressed that you know they had talked about good times and things like that and it seemed as though Pam and Judy wouldn't have mind, minded to speak about it, but because Adrian was very much solid in his, he would not discuss that, um, the, the family continued to um, uplift him and, and support him in that notion. Um, that is one of the family strengths that they seem to have um, because they, they are seem, although they may be emotionally disconnected at times, especially when there is high anxiety, they will all shut down. As they expressed before, um, they'll go their separate ways when somebody gets upset. Judy, Adri Adrian will more so yell and scream, but Judy will shut down. And Pam will shut down um, when they are upset. Um, however, when they, when there, it seems that they have a level of respect for each other's um, space and um, feeling and that they will not push it. They are, if that's just what it is, if somebody's upset, then, you know, that's just what it is. They won't push them to get them to, to do things that's um, uncomfortable to them. We spoke about the substance abuse um, that Adrian had um, and also has been projected and transmitted um, with Pam. She has done the exact opposite of what Adrian has done in that she does not drink at all. She doesn't even like bars. She doesn't want to go to bars and, she doesn't become socially active in, with people, I guess, who are in those type of settings because probably because of her father's alcohol abuse and um, she has um, the issues that has been projected onto her from that has probably pushed her into the opposite direction of using or uh, even consuming alcohol at all. She just does not, she chooses not to use it. Um, in a sense, that is her way of passive aggressively expressing herself that, you know, she, she probably didn't like her father as an angry drunk, so she chooses not to do it at all. 
Um, the parent-child relationship, as described before, there is a lot of disconnect between Pam and Judy. She does not come to her. She doesn't talk to her at all, according to Judy. Pam says she doesn't understand why. According to Judy, Judy feels that she is not, um, she feels that Pam associates her with pain because I guess there was a lot of surgeries and things when Pam was a baby that um, Judy would take her to go to the doctors and get help with. And Judy feels that Pam associates her with pain, which could very well be the case. And that is why Ju uh, Pam continues to distance herself because she doesn't want to be associate. You know, she doesn't want to feel that pain any longer. Um, she is close with Adrian, who did not um, attend her doctor visits when she was young or not that often, according to Judy. So um, she, you know, built a bond, um, seems like a stronger bond with her father than she has with her mother. Again, we spoke about the physical and mental disorders that had, um, that Pam has. She is mentally disabled, but we do not know exactly what her mental, her capabilities or limitations are. They weren't disclosed in the um, in the video, and it doesn't even speak about it in relation to her living on her own or doing for herself. She does work. It seems like close to a full time job um, where she is bringing in. She works about twenty five to thirty dollars, uh, thirty hours a week um, at a grocery store. Um, so she is self sufficient to maintain a job. However, apparently, she is not sufficient sufficient enough to live outside the home. Although, her family would like her to live outside the home. Um, but it seems like there is a push and pull between within this triangle um, that the family has created that pushes Pam away to um, become more social, but at the same time still treats her like a child in that she can't go but so far. For example, um, she, Pam... Uh, does do social uh, social activities like she'll go to bingo, she'll go to bowling. However, those people, the people in that crowd, are not her age or in her age or, or in her social uh, her typical social group um, population of people. She is more so around elderly people who already have families and things like that. Pam has also disclosed that she is not ready or she doesn't know, but she wants a family for herself. She says she's still deciding. So in her case, she would very well um, like to live with her family for the rest of her life. Apparently, um, the therapist asked her if she would be willing, if she won a condo um, for, from a lottery, if she would, you know, move out then. And she basically explained that, you know, she would bring her parents with her. So she is not too inept and ready to leave her parents. Um, a possible, my hypo possible hypothesis about that is that um, maybe she's afraid to leave her parents and she doesn't feel like she wants to abandon her parents, much like her brother abandoned um, her family. And maybe she feels that she has to be that um, hero in a sense and, and be there for her parents and still kind of have her parents take care of somebody because they already lost one child. And so maybe she doesn't, inter internally she feels like she doesn't want to abandon her family as in, as her um, her brother did with his suicide, um, with, with, the, with his suicide. And, um, and also had, could possibly be along the lines of her attachment issues that she has with um, being adopted. And that she doesn't want to officially detach from her family because she may have internal um, stigmas from um, not being wanted um, because of being adopted or just wanting to cling on to things um, in relation to her family because of that disconnect from her biological family. There is, there seems like there is a uh, very low level differentiation between the family. Um, as the video disclosed, it seems like to be a closed, this is a closed system. They're very tight knit, um, although they are a bit emotionally cut off in some aspects um, in relation to communication and expressing themselves when they are feeling upset or angry or hurt, um, they will shut down. However, they're very close, tight knit in that they don't 
they they are respectful of each other and not discussing certain things certain things and certain aspects but they will um they will continue to help each other and take care of each other helping clean cook things like that um when necessary and um that aids with their um low level of differentiation especially Pam Pam is very um has although she's emotionally cut off and she does do things with friends like her friend Jesse, who she actually looks up as a, as a grandmother. Um, she does disclose, um, to her some of her feelings and things like that, which ultimately is, a uh, she kind of builds a triangle between Jesse and her parents, um, in relation to, you know, allowing this, outsider to have access to her her thoughts and her feelings and things like that whereas her parents do not um this definitely causes tension um between pam and judy because um pam uh, judy is probably in a sense jealous that she allowed that pam allows another woman to have access to these um thoughts and feelings that Judy does not have access to, to, um, in relation to sibling position, we're not too sure where Pam falls in line. According to the video, I don't know if that's her older brother or younger brother who committed suicide. I believe from prior videos, if I can remember it correctly, that is her young, her older brother that had committed suicide, but it, I'm not sure. So in relation to the younger sister of a brother, um, it would, seem that she would be more so of a person who is um, allow uh, 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 allows to be um, allows for herself to be nurtured and um, taken care of for the most part not necessarily a leader or pushing you know to to take care of the family but more so just there to um, be taken care of and and baby in a sense. Um, there is a boy, um, that in relation to Sam, um, um, being pushed to, for her social aspect, um, to be more social, Pam definitely is, um, pushed and pulled by her mother, like we spoke about, um, by her mother and her father in relation to being social, but still being a child, being social, but still being taken care of. They still cook clean and, and do the basic needs that they need to do for a child, um, but yet they want her to go out there and still be um, an adult. And But she doesn't pay any bills, according to them. She doesn't pay any bills. She doesn't help out other than cook, cooking and cleaning at times, maybe breakfast, maybe. Um, but they don't. she doesn't really go the extra effort of doing what a 32-year-old woman should do. In relation to, again, to differentiation, I do believe that the father has the, the lowest level of differentiation because he um, is very emotionally charged and reacts um, out, outwardly um, towards the different things that he does not necessarily agree with that the family does. Um, as well as Judy, I feel like Judy is probably the, has the highest level of differentiation in between um, both Pam and Adrian. However, I do feel like it's still lower on the Bowenian scale because she is not as, um, she is, Still emotionally um, coherent, um, coherent in relation to her emotions and understanding the difference between because she she realizes that she's an emotional person, but she know, and she knows that she cries easily. However, she knows the difference between her emotions that she's upset because um, somebody did something to her or somebody you know somebody within the family has agitated her, triggered her. Or whether she's just emotional because she's seen a a, a sad movie or or something like that. So there is definitely um, a level of differentiation that is a little bit more above um, the 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 normalcy of the rest of the family um, that I believe. And with that being said, I do feel that the family as a whole. Um, Again, it's very much enmeshed, very much fused, a closed system. Um, it has a bit of a low level of differentiation, and I believe that once the differentiation um, 
discussion ha has been said and done, I do feel like the family will eventually come to a conclusion where they'll um, work to kind of um, distance themselves emotionally and deal more on the cognitive level with each other and then react um, instead of just high tension, shutting down, not speaking or not expressing themselves emotionally. Because even though they might not outwardly have the rants and um, arguments, um, the emotional cutoff and the shutting down is still a passive way of expressing that they are not um, differentiated um, on a higher level. So with that being said, um, thank you for listening to my Bowenian con um, case conceptualization um, about the B family. And I hope you enjoyed and I hope you think this is a great video. <laughs> All right. Have a great day.